just going to work here is risky. City council members survived this attack by a suicide bomber. The attacker from nearby Fallujah killed one of the guards. These bullet holes are from another attack. Shakar al Asawi has been in office six years. He's learned to stay away from the windows. Amiriyat al Fallujah has a very important strategic location. It connects with three provinces Holy Karbala, Babil, and the Baghdad Belt. If the ISIL terrorists are able to take Amiriyat al Fallujah, they will be at the doors of Baghdad and the southern provinces. The daily rounds here are a bit different. Tribal fighters hold one of the last lines of defense between ISIL territory and Baghdad. This bunker on the outskirts of Amariyat al Fallujah is the last point in eastern Al Anbar not controlled by ISIL. Within sight of here, there's an ISIL position, and just 20 minutes down the road is the ISIL stronghold of Fallujah. After that, it's thousands of kilometers until the Syrian border, controlled by the group. There are no heavy weapons and no armored vehicles. Sheikh Hayal is one of 20 city council members, all of them also fighters. Before ISIL, three of his sons died fighting al-Qaeda. One killed himself rather than be captured and beheaded. He called me on the radio saying he had run out of ammunition and he was going to kill himself. We ran back for help and came back and killed 14 of them. This is a traditional way of life with an unforgiving code. Almost every evening, ISIL launches mortars from a nearby field. One of them hit this grocery store on the first day of Ramadan. Seven people were killed. Even the hospital is targeted. 14-year-old Aya was in her garden when she was hit by shrapnel. There are few places that families in Amrita Fallujah can go. The shop next to the bakery was destroyed by a mortar. But as long as the bakery is intact, workers prepare for the evening rush, part of the dangerous routine of life on the urban front lines. Jane Araf, Al Jazeera, Amrita Fallujah, Iraq.